your hand and take. In two weeks' time, ICAD completed both homes and was able to hand over the keys to the eager families. It was a joyous event and all of us who volunteered to make it happen were glad that we had a part in it. Despite the good feelings everyone had while helping the Mustafa family move into their new home, this was not exactly a happy ending. It isn't just coming in it to feel good. And what we emphasize all the time is that building is a political act of resistance. It's not humanitarian. We're not coming in, uh, you know, to help these poor people. And that's not the tone of our messages at all. Civil disobedience, you're not allowed to build houses. We take our responsibility also to let the world know about the building and what's going on. So we contribute to the political dynamic. You know, one of the Palestinians said to us, we're not victims like victims of an earthquake. You know, we're, we're victims, if we're victims, of a, a political oppression. You know, if it's an earthquake, I, there's nothing you can do. You help the victims. But, but this is something where you can prevent the demolition of our homes. You can prevent the oppression from taking place. Don't understand that we're partners in the peace process and in resisting. But not everyone is resisting by choice or as political act. The Mustafas didn't have a choice, and they were fighting for survival. Mr. Mustafas told us they had been camping out in the neighbor's yard next door because they didn't have anywhere to go. And ICAD, despite all its success in recent years, isn't exactly popular in the Israeli public. Uh, we are pretty much hated in Israel. People would look at you as an extremist, as someone who is a, a dangerous for their life here. Who think that that their life that if they think that if you are helping Palestinians or taking part of, of re rebuilding. Uh, the Palestinian society or necessarily hurt the Israeli society. I have a lot of fights with all the surroundings, with my family and friends, you know. I became such an extremist and they are still a uh, normal go by the stream Israelis and it's kind of uh, strange. One of the sad truths is that most Israelis, they either don't know or don't care. Uh, there is not enough people who act, it's also that there is not enough people who are aware and knows what's happening and not enough people want to know because Israel, and that's something very, very ironic, uh, the Israeli people are living, uh, want to live like Europeans or North American people. They want to feel that they're part of something else and, and many of them don't want to, don't, don't uh, realize the fact that they're part of the Middle East and that that kind of thing is happening in their backyard. Israelis are very patriotic and getting Israelis not only to become critical of their government but to take responsibility for its actions is not an easy task. Even the Israeli activists that I encountered told me that it wasn't an easy process for them. Are you always critical of your country or was there some a shift at some time? <laughs> oh, it's a big, the big question. Uh, no, I was, I wasn't uh, I was like blind, you know, with all the things that they tell you till I was like 18, 19. I, I didn't know the reality. And even now I just know a bit, a bit of, uh, you know, little pieces of the reality. I came here for one day and then a year uh, I go and I live my life. At the end of the summer camp, volunteers went back to their daily lives. The Hamdans and the Mustafas settled into their new home. But the reality remains very clear. Both families' new homes have a view looking over toward the Israeli separation wall, only a mile away, and an army base on the other side. That night, and every night following it, they sleep in fear, knowing that the Israeli military could come back any day, whether tomorrow or in ten years, to destroy their home once again.
Gone me 